here we supposed to focus on pediatrics cardiovascular disorder, particularly about the heart failure. The heart failure, what are the definition? The inability of the heart to pump a sufficient amount of blood to meet the metabolic or oxygen needs of the body. So heart is pumped and this blood distributes to all over the body and tissue get oxygenation and provide the nutrition by metabolic process. So heart failure, if you ask me what is the definition of heart failure? So when heart muscle does not pump adequately, effectively, and resulting in decrease the cardiac output. In some medical condition where oxygen demand is increased, in heart failure, heart does not provide the adequate oxygen to the tissue. So in the picture, you can see a fourth chamber, the right atria, right ventricle, left atria, and left ventricle. So sometimes heart failure occur in the left ventricle or left side, we call left-sided heart failure. And sometimes heart failure occur in the right side, we call right-sided heart failure. So if the patient have a left side heart failure in, in this area, result in pulmonary congestion or patient develop with the pulmonary edema. Because you see, this is the atria, the normal picture, the blood is come superior vena cava and inferior vena cava accumulate to the right atria. From right atria, blood supposed to go right ventricle. During the contraction of right ventricle, blood supposed to go to the lungs, where the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange and blood reback to the heart in the left atria, from left atria blood go left ventricle, and left ventricle when contraction blood go to the all over the body through the arch of aorta. But when the left side heart fail, result in pulmonary congestion. Means blood go re back in the lungs and patient develop pulmonary edema. The key symptoms when patient have a left side heart failure occur, they develop the dyspnea or shortness of breath, they develop the crackles, added sound or wheezing, or patient complain the cough, shortness of breath, we call dyspnea, right or also orthopnea so patient when lie down they start the shortness of breath orthopnea or patient complain of the fatigue pink or prothis putam right also some patient contain uh, complain of period of cyanosis because of less oxygen to the tissue, retraction because accessory muscle use or trachycardia develop. In when patient develop the right side heart failure, either right atria, right ventricle, that side. And you see the blood if you atria or ventricle does not work well, 
then blood should go re, re back backward direction and patient develop the peripheral edema so in case of the right side heart failure the re result in systemic congestion and patient usually complain the jugular vein distension hmm? ascites hepatosplenomegaly liver getting enlarged spleen get enlarged hepatomegaly or splenomegaly or both we call hepatosplenomegaly and also peripheral edema develop peripheral edema especially dependent edema or periorbital so edema around the eye also develop the ascites hmm? weight gain oligouria so as a healthcare provider we have to measure patient body weight every day so what next in infant or children inadequate cardiac output is the most commonly causes by congenital heart defect. Congenital heart defect may be because of shunt, because of obstruction or both shunt and obstruction. We have a different lecture on congenital heart defect and that produce an excessive volume or pressure load to myocardium. In infant and children, a combination of both left and right side heart failure usually present. Because when patient have heart failure, maybe right side, it lead to the left side heart failure, and both can lead to congenital heart failure. So the goal of the treatment are improve the cardiac function and also remove accumulated fluid and sodium from the body decrease the cardiac demand improve the tissue oxygenation and also decrease the oxygen consumption so as a healthcare provider we could moni hemodynamic monitoring is important in, because patient increase the central venous pressure, also decrease the cardiac output. So we could monitor it. Also EKG or echocardiogram need to check. In echocardiogram, we see reduce the ejection fraction. Hmm? And the sign and symptom of heart failure, we already discussed a little bit, but now let me explain here. In this picture, you can see the common feature of the heart failure. Coughing, tiredness, shortness of breath, because fluid is accumulated inside the lungs we call congestion, plural effusion, fluid accumulated inside the scrural space, excess fluid. Also fluid in the abdominal cavity and patient develop ascites or pumping action of the heart grows weaker and patient develop the peripheral edema or swelling in the ankle and legs. So before to go the data collection here, in that picture we def def differentiate the sign and symptom right side and left side. So left side heart failure Mm -hmm. So, just 
think about L E F T na L L think for left side L stand for lungs right so fluid go into the lungs if our left heart failure occur or left side heart failure fluid go into the lungs and patient present the signs symptom related to the lungs so if fluid go into the lungs if you check the lungs we can get the added sound crackles or wheezing patient develop cough patient develop shortness of breath or dyspnea or for the pink sputum right patient develop orthopnea restlessness and also sinus tachycardia all is related to the lungs l stand for left l stand for lungs so left side heart failure most of the sign and symptom related to the lungs orthopnea what stand for patient cannot lie down on bed because of shortness of breath so congestive heart failure or heart failure our terminology or keyword here it is happens when the heart cannot pump enough blood to meet the body demands or needs and the right side heart failure are stand for right so think about the r i as i told you r stand for right r stand for rest of the body so the sign symptom of the right side heart failure related to the rest of the body what does it mean patient develop hepatomegaly liver getting enlarged spleen getting enlarged splenomegaly or both we call hepatosplenomegaly or jugular vein distension rest of the body peripheral edema fitting edema periorbital edema it is rest of the body also body weight gain the body weight so peripheral edema ascites or enlarge the organ liver enlarge spleen enlarge heart enlarge weight gain distended the neck vein right all is the rest of the body keep it mind most of the client have failure both said heart failure or right said heart failure lead to develop left side heart failure and left and right both side failure lead to the congestive heart failure so before to go the heart failure we have to do go for the some uh, test for diagnosis like blood gas analysis chest x ray or we can check the b and p it is significant for heart failure when b and p is more than 100 it indicate patient develop congestive heart failure so data collection of early sign this what we discuss same thing recap it in the picture you can see the patient pediatrics patient in acute right heart failure or acute left heart failure so patient develop the loss of appetite or lower leg edema and weight gain right side we said rest of the body and left side heart failure 
left for L for left, L for lungs. Complication or sign symptom related to the lungs. Like patient develop shortness of breath and or shortness of breath during exertion. And also patient upright respiration position, shortness of breath and coughing, sputum, palpitation and fatigue and tiredness. So what next? What are the other sign symptom? Trachycardia, increase the heart rate, especially during the rest and during exertion. Trachypnea, profuse diaphoresis, excess sweating, especially in infant, fatigue and irritability, sudden weight gain related to excess fluid retention or respiratory distress. So what is the nursing intervention in a short? Nursing intervention, make sure your patient take enough bed rest, give them oxygen, also treatment like digoxin or special diet, low sodium diet and food restriction. So now here, monitor the early sign of heart failure, means what are the sign symptoms? Monitor for respiratory distress. If any, we give them oxygen. Also count the respiration for one full minute. Monitor apical pulses and count apical pulse for one minute. Monitor the abnormal rhythm. Because patient develop trachycardia, trachypnea. So apical pulse, so pulse over the apex Beat. So what next? Monitor the temperature for hypothermia and for other sign of infection, particularly respiratory infection. Monitor the strict intake and output. Food balance is important. Body weight. In case of pediatrics patient, we check the diaper. Right, monitor the daily weight gain or monitor the weight to check for food retention. So when patient body weight going up, it indicate food retention in the body. Also, auscultate the lungs to check for any added lung sound like stridor or wheezing or crackles. Report abnormal findings that indicate excess fluid in the body. Elevate the head of the bed in a semi -polar. So posture is important. It reduces the congestion and reduces the shortness of breath. Maintain a neural thermal environment to prevent the cold stress in infant. So what next? Provide rest. So as a healthcare provider, always keep in mind, bed rest is very important for your patient. Decrease the environmental stimuli and provide enough oxygen. Administer humidified oxygen as prescribed. Organize the nursing activities to allow for uninterrupted sleep. So complete bed rest. Maintain adequate nutritional status. Also, when hungry soon after awaken or conserving energy and oxygen supply. Provide small frequent foods or feeding. Why? To save the energy or give them oxygen. Admin sedation as prescribed. So they need a special diet. 
what it is low sodium and food restriction so now question when we go for the treatment or cardiac medication we have to keep in mind few points okay so nursing care is important so so our first priority admin oxygen then position of the patient in high polar or semi polar monitor daily body weight maintain input output also restricted fluid and sodium intake what about the medication so check the apical heart rate for one minute before admin the digoxin right withhold the digoxin if apical pulse is less than 90 in case of infant if your patient is young children and if we found the apical pulse rate less than 70 beat per minute we have to hold it and we could contact with the healthcare provider or evaluate and be aware that the infant sometimes very uncommon receive more than one ml so if the doses is too much or too less in both cases we have to contact with healthcare provider to clarification monitor the digoxin level for the sign of digoxin toxicity so digoxin is a narrow therapeutic index so always keep in mind the patient chance to develop digoxin toxicity so it is important to check so here we said that before to start the digoxin take the pulse and hold for defined the parameters like what parameters i already mentioned if the pulse is less than 90 in case of infant if the patient is child if it is less than 70 per minute we have to hold also use the calibrated device that comes with medication to prevent overdose so also we have to check and monitor the sign and symptom of digoxin toxicity what are the sign symptom like patient develop anorexia poor feeding because baby does not talk how you understand the baby has a problem first sign anorexia and refuse to eat refuse to feeding or patient vomiting develop bradycardia gi upset like nausea vomiting diarrhea if condition is very bad if the condition is really bad develop abnormal heart rhythm we call dysarrhythmias and report any sign of digoxin toxicity to healthcare provider also uh, before to go next if the common question come what are the normal digoxin level it is 0.5 to 0.8 right digoxin toxicity occur when the level in the blood is more than 0.8 nanogram per ml or 1.02 nanomole per liter so if we see a patient has a vomiting or any sign of digoxin toxicity as a healthcare provider what you should do First priority, do not administer second dose if patient have vomit or sign symptom of digoxin toxicity. We go for the monitor the blood level and therapeutic range is 
0.6 to 0.8 or 0.5 to 0.8, and some book wrote 0.8 to 2 microgram per ml per liter. So if patient develop the digoxin toxicity, at least we stop it, contact the healthcare provider and give water to drink. What next? What are the other medication we provide? So also other question sometimes and would ask for digoxin. If you miss the one dose and next time do you give them double dose? So do not double medication amount if a dose is missed. As I told you, if digoxin toxicity, give water and help the child brush the their teeth after administration to prevent the denture decay. It is also intervention. What next? So admin the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor as prescribed. Also admin the diuretics as a Prusamide as or diuretics as a prusamide. So here we go. What are the medication for congestive heart failure? Administer the angiotensin converting enzyme, shortly called ACE inhibitor. So monitor for if you give the SC inhibitor, we could monitor for hypotension or we could check the kidney function test or dry cough because this is the side effect of S inhibitor. The blood pressure, we could monitor blood pressure, serum protein, albumin, blood urea nitrogen for kidney function, creatinine level. White blood cell count, urine output import, specific gravity, and urine protein level. Also, give them diuretics. If you give diuretics, monitor for the sign and symptom of hypokalemia, because chance to access loss of potassium, patient tends to develop hypokalemia. So you encouraging your patient to take potassium containing food and normal serum potassium level if less than 3.5 milli equivalent per liter we call hypokalemia if you not treated lead to dysthmia and if hypokalemia develop what are the other signs symptom we can see muscle weakness muscle cramping and confusion, irritability, restlessness. In EKG or ECG, we can see inverted T wave and also prominent E waves. If the sign and symptom of hypokalemia are present, the child also being administered digoxin. So, if in a short, what are the medication we use for? congestive heart failure, we use ACE inhibitor, digoxin, beta blocker, and nitroglycerin, and anticoagulant. And what are the lab values? Before to go for the treatment, so we need to the laboratory test the prime first test is blood gas analysis, chest x-ray, and also we can check the B and P. B stands for 
ya. We check for BNP, right? It is called HBNP, means human B type natiuretic peptide, right? So it is very specific for heart failure. If we see the BNP is more than 100, hmm, it indicate patient has a congestive heart failure. What next? Next is here. Admin the potassium supplement and provide dietary sources of potassium as prescribed. Supplemental potassium is prescribed if the need is indicated by low serum potassium level. Encourage the food that the child will eat that are high in potassium. Also monitor the serum electrolyte level, particularly potassium. And what are the normal range? 3.5 to 5.0. Less than 3.5, hypokalemia. Less than more than 5.0, hyperkalemia. Both are bad. Both can lead to dysarrhythmia. And dysarrhythmia lead to cardiac arrest. Also limit the fluid intake as prescribed in acute states. What are the intervention? Hmm? Other intervention basically. Or if I said, what are the nursing care for the patient? So we could, first of all, monitor the sign and symptom of dehydration. So it is important you have to know what the sign and symptom of dehydration for NFLEX port. So the, here the sign of dehydration, thirsty, dry mouth, dry skin, headache, and urine output less, and also rapid heartbeat, right? So here, the early sign, or if the dehydration is very mild, we can see the weight loss or capillary refill is less than two seconds, and patient is slightly thirsty. If the dehydration is moderate, we can see the capillary refill should be more than two to four second, patient thirsty, irritabilities, increase the pulse rate, and also slight trachypnea, dry mucous membrane, and decrease tear and skin trigger. In case of severe dehydration, we can check, if you check, you see the capillary refill is more than four seconds. Patient develop trachycardia means heartbeat increase, trachypnea, pulse rate increase, orthostatic hypotension, blood pressure drop, extremely thirsty, hmm? no tear, sunken eyeball, sunken anterior frontanelli, or oligouria or anuria, no urine output at all. It is wrote here, sunken frontanel or skin trigger, dry mucous membrane, decrease the tear production, decrease urine output, and concentrate urine or oligouria or anuria, means absence of urine. So monitor the sodium level as prescribed. Monitor the level, what are the normal sodium level? 135 to 145 milli equivalent per liter. So if the sodium level go down or 
if the sodium level go up the upper normal limit we call hypernatremia when less than 135 hyponatremia sodium imbalance lead to the potassium imbalance and both lead to the dysarrhythmias we need to correct it so the if you patient dehydration the best way to monitor hydration status for the infant and young children count the number of wet diaper per day that this is the question and flex board frequently asks also reinforce instruction to the patient regarding description of the diagnosis and administer of medication so what are the NCLEX tips? As I told you, the best way to monitor the hydration status for infant and young children, count the number of wet diaper per day. NCLEX board sometimes ask the question from here. So now here, what are the Home care instruction for administering the decoxin. Hmm. Admin as prescribed, use an accurate measurement device as provided by the pharmacist. So if you use the accurate device, chance to avoid the overdose. So use the calibrated device that comes with medication to prevent the overdose. Use a calendar to mark off the dose administration. Do not mix medication with food and fluid. If the dose is missed for more than four hours as over, withhold the dose and give the next dose at schedule time. So do not double the medication, right? Amount if the dose is missed. If the child vomit, do not admin a second dose. We do not. If more than two consecutive dose have been missed, notify healthcare provider or do not increase or double the dose for missed doses. If the child has, ha, has teed or give water after medication. If possible, brush the teeth to prevent the decay, right? So in a short, give the water or ha, have the child brush the teeth after administration to prevent denture decay. Monitor the sign of toxicity, such as poor feeding, vomiting, it's an early sign, right? Also call the poison control center immediately if you see overdose occur. So, what are the main, uh, main uh, priority? Take the pulse before administer the medication. Hold for the digoxin if infant pulse is less than 90, or in case of child, if less than 70. So what next? So reinforce the instruction to the patient in cardiopulmonary resuscitation of CPR, the guideline for CPR for the child older than one year of age are the same as adult. The parent should be provided with a medication guide also for any medication prescribed for the infant or child. In addition, the nurse needs to re review the instruction in guide or provide the opportunities for the parents to demonstrate the medication administration process. 
that is more than enough about the heart failure in pediatrics.